The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Hello and welcome to Kingdom Connection. Thank you so much for joining us. I believe this program is really going to minister to you. Let me ask you a question. Do you know anyone who needs to be free from addiction? Do you know any family that you personally are aware of that is being affected by addiction, whether it's alcoholism or drugs? Is your family going through a time of, of, of contention and pain and agony and hurt and brokenness? You need what you're going to hear on this telecast today on Kingdom Connection. I'm delighted to have with me some women from a great, great ministry that we as a ministry, Kingdom Connection partners, are very involved with, and it's called New Beginnings. It's a home where women come from all over and their lives are put back together. It's a beautiful place there where they live. And uh, there's over 70 women there, and m many of them have children. And sometimes they're coming out of abusive situations and, and all kinds of issues that they're having to deal with. And they even have facilities for the children on this great campus called New Beginnings. I'm delighted to have the director, Sharon Thompson, with me and three of the young ladies that are in the program currently. And we're going to hear some powerful testimonies. Listen to me. You need to really lean in because this is going to be one of the most moving and I believe powerful uh, times that we've had on this telecast because there's nothing like hearing people tell their story of how Jesus set them free. And I don't care how hopeless, I don't care how dark, I don't care how lonely you feel in a brand new year. Sometimes you feel like there's just no way out. You know, people facing a brand new year, there's just no way out. There is a way out, and these ladies have found it, and they're going to point you to that way. But Sharon, you founded New Beginnings Ministry, and uh, it's a beautiful thing what God is doing. Hundreds. hundreds of women have been through that program. Hundreds, hundreds and, and hundreds. And, hundreds. And, and they truly are being set free. Yes. For example, Carly, who's right beside you. Carly, why don't you tell us, you, 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 you're a beautiful young lady. You don't look like you would ever be the, the typical person that we would think would end up, you know, on drugs or alcoholism. What happened in your life? Tell us your story. Both of my parents are addicts. And um, whenever I was about 12 years old is whenever I started to use drugs that I had, you know, gotten from being around them. And it, they were hard drugs. You know, I tried meth for the first time when I was 12. Wow. Um, crack cocaine. How old are you now? I'm 25. 25. Mm -hmm. So, um... I continued to use drugs on and off, and when I was 18, I started to slip further and further and deeper and deeper into an addiction, and that's whenever I started to get involved with meth heavily and pain pills. Um, by the time I was 19, I was completely dependent. I dropped out of college. I um, had became an IV drug user, mm. and this went on until I was 22. Whenever I was 22, after being arrested for like the 10th time, maybe nine, nine times, I um, was looking at a prison sentence, a, a pretty hefty prison sentence. I was with someone who was trafficking methamphetamine and they were telling me that I was gonna do a minimum of 10 years in prison. Well, in the jail I was in, there was a little old lady who used to bring Bibles. And um, when, I was, when I was in DFAX, I spent some time in the Georgia Baptist Children's Home in Baxley. And, and, you know, through that, I learned a lot about God and just never took hold to it. So at first, I wasn't so sure about getting a Bible. I kind of felt like God might be mad at me. Hmm. But whenever I was sitting in that jail, you know, and I felt like, oh, there's no way that God would want to talk to me or, or hear from me after everything that I've done. But it just kept gnawing at me, you know, and I, I had opened up someone else's Bible and started looking at it and closed it real quick. And something kept drawing me to go get one of those Bibles, you know. And hmm. so I went and got one one Wednesday and I got alone and I just started reading from it. And something in my heart just cried out to, I felt so bad for the things I'd done. I was so full of sorrow and guilt and so I, cry, I cried out in that moment. I was like, you know, Lord, 
I know I don't even know if you're if you can hear me right now or if you're really out there, but I know that how I've been living's wrong, and I'm so sorry. And if you'll just please forgive me and just wash me, and you know, and and let me start over and just change me, God, because I don't know how to change. I don't know how to stop doing the things I'm doing, or if I even can. So good. But if you can help me, hmm. if you'll touch me, Lord, then I'll live for you. I'll change. And, and how I did you end up that. at New Beginnings? Where did that connection take place? Well, I, I did end up going on to prison. Um, I didn't get 10 years, though. I only got three. Wow. And of that, I only did 19 months. So I went into prison as a Christian, and, you know, that was, that was hard <laughs> because there, there, there aren't very many people there like, like that. But God walked with me the whole time, and I, I never got, I was never unsafe. I was never harmed or anything. I was, it was very, it was a comfortable comfortable enough, you know, and um, it was coming time for me to get out, and they had actually decided to let me out early, and I heard about New Beginnings through um, another church comes there to do Celebrate Recovery at the prison, and they would sponsor people to go there. Well, um, then I was like, I'd heard about it, but I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, and so then I, it was coming time for me to get out, and I started talking to my counselor in prison about it, and she was like, oh, well, I'm a member at Free Chapel. And she's a member of your church. And she was like, I, I can get you in there. We're going to call them, you know. And I was like, okay, well, I was fixing to get out that next week. So, and they were going to let me out regardless. So I, I was just kind of, it was up in the air. And, and they called me back. And they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll take you, you know. And so whenever I was released and I walked out of those gates, it was just such a big moment for me, you know. There was a staff member from New Beginnings there waiting on me. Wow. And brought me to the ministry. So great. And you know, even though city of refuge. You it know, was, they had cities, cities of refuge in the Bible. That when you were really in trouble, when the avenger of blood, the Bible said, you know, would chase them, something in their past was still after them. They could run into a city of refuge, and by law, it was a safe place that the enemies could not touch them. This was in the Bible called a city of refuge. And that's what you found in Jesus first, yes. but then in the in the church, in the body of Christ, in in new beginnings. And it was all part of His plan because you know, even though I had been born again, I, I still had a lot of baggage from my past, sure. you know. Sure. And there was a, still a lot of forgiveness for mm -hmm. myself and mm -hmm. for my family and, sure. and things I needed to walk through, things I needed to heal from right. that I really just wasn't quite sure how. Right. And. Um, I wanted to be around Christian people to help my faith grow so that I wouldn't lose what I'd found. And that's what I got there. I found a family. That's so powerful. And I, I mean, this could be my daughter. I have a 25 year old daughter. This could be your son or your daughter. And this is the, what I love about your story is it was raw Jesus. It was Jesus only. I mean, you didn't have, you didn't encounter a, a church or a choir and a sermon and all that, that you found Jesus in a prison with your addiction. He didn't wait to love you when you got your act together, but just as you were, He took you, loved you, forgave you, cleansed you, empowered you, gave you His grace, and here you sit today, and you, you are a trophy of grace, and to God be the glory. And then beside you is Jennifer. Jennifer, yes. uh, tell, us, tell us your story. Okay. Um, well, when I think about my story to get to New Beginnings, I think about um, it was New Year's Eve okay. coming into 2013, and you know everybody was all happy and party and stuff like that. But I remember thinking to myself, I wouldn't make it another year. I didn't think wow. I thought I thought that my addiction had gotten so bad that if I continued on, I wouldn't even see another now, birthday. Now, now, see, I wonder if people are watching this program by divine design. And when you said that, I just felt it's the New Year. It was. Mm -hmm. And everybody's partying and celebrating, and you're wondering, well, I, I, I won't make it another year. Yeah. Somebody may be feeling that kind of hopelessness, that kind of bottom. You know, when your life hits bottom, Jesus is there. Yeah. Yes. He's there. He so there. so you're, they're partying, you're feeling so like I'm something's... So I'm feeling like I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make it. The mess I had made, I had been using since I was 12, so I had been using for like 15 years. Wow. And it just got worse and worse and worse. I had, I was homeless. I didn't have any of my kids. My goodness. I had nowhere to go. I had no job, no license, no Where were car. you living? In motel to motel. Mm. $20 a night motels, you know, nasty, filth, crime rate, you know. Yeah. And so <laughs> I remember asking God angrily, 
what do you want with me? Why am I still here? I wanted to die if I was going to continue on like that, you know. And um, about a month later, I went to jail. And while I was there, somebody told me about New Beginnings and gave me the address. And uh, I just wrote them a letter and told them that I, was, I needed help, that I didn't see any way out. You know, I was completely hopeless. I didn't know how I'd ever get my life back together. Mm. And they called me and accepted me. Praise God. And I went there, and it, my life's been changed forever. It will be changed forever because of Jesus. Now, you have, you have kids too, right? I have four boys. Four boys. Yes. And did they, has your family been put back together? They, yes, sir. They came to live with me. At, on the grounds? On the grounds, that you began. yeah. They came back one at a time as an easier transition. Wow. And, um, four boys. Four boys, yeah. My, um, my, my son, when he got there, he was three years old. And um, this was when they built a small dorm. Right. And he was three years old. He couldn't talk. He couldn't say, Mama, Daddy. He had been so neglected mm. from my addiction mm. that um, he, you know, he couldn't talk or anything. I took him to the doctor, and they said that they thought he was autistic. They sent me to Atlanta. They said they saw several red flags for autism. And so they wanted to see him again in another six months to a year. So I took took him back to New Begins. And as I went to work every day, the people at Small Dorm would work with him. And within three to six months, he was talking. My goodness. After a year, I took him back and he had no more red flags. Whew. No more red flags for autism. See, that, that's the thing. God is a healer of broken dreams and a restorer of stolen years. Yeah. He said in Joel chapter two, I will restore the years, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and what do they eat at? They eat at trees and fruit. That's, that can be the family tree. Right. Just devouring the family yeah. tree from the roots all the way up, trying to decimate your family forever. And here comes Jesus and yeah. His grace and His love yeah. finds you in a prison, connects you to the body of Christ yeah. in a unique way, yeah. saves you. Now the family, those boys, yeah. are not under a curse. They're right. under a blessing. Right. And how are they doing? Well, they're growing stronger as brothers, and they're, my oldest two boys are in sports and school. Come on. Things they would have never done had, I not, had God not changed my life. They're living fully and abundantly. And you what know. are you doing now? Did you, did you, uh, you guys offer diplomas, and you help with jobs and all kinds of things. They got me a job. They helped me get a job at AutoZone, Livonia. So great. And, so um, great. Yeah, and I got hired in there. I make enough now to support my family alone. I have a four-bedroom house, a nice car, all my family, my kids, my mom and my dad. Mm. It's been fully, fully, fully restored. And I bet you're still involved in the ministry, too. Still love my family at New Beginnings. Yeah, yep. that's so great, so great, Jennifer. And Dina, you need to tell us your story because these are blessing people. <laughs> I just sense the presence of God. Yeah. I just sense the love of God reaching out to people. You may be saying, well, well how does it happen? It's grace. Grace means divine empowerment. Yes. When, when God's grace comes into your life, He gives you a divine empowerment to do what you can't do on your own. Did that happen to you? Yes. Um, mine was a little bit different than, than my sister's here, but um, I, I lived in New Jersey, and like I grew up Catholic, and I had a great family, like no traumatic experiences in my life, and had a really good childhood, and um, I went to school. I got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and you know, I didn't have a relationship with God, but I was in church, and you know, didn't understand the relationship aspect of it. And, um, and I would, you know, do drugs. I d didn't think I had an addiction, but I would do like different experiment and drank and went to bars and, you know, um, but in the meantime, I was doing school and doing well and getting my degrees and everything. But I guess I'm 41 now. So when um, I got my master's degree in 2009 um, in counseling, I, um, I guess when I got the degree is when, after I got it, is when I started hanging out with my cousin um, and we just started partying. She was like 10 years younger than me, so you know, I just, just wanted mm -hmm. to have fun because my whole life was school and mm -hmm. work and I wasn't married, I don't have any children. And, um, and so that's when, I didn't realize it at that point, but that's when the addiction took place and, and, and um, I was doing pain pills and um, in 2012, I had lost my, um, my job as a counselor 
due to all the partying and, you know, just not being at work and not caring anymore. And I you know, just wanted to have fun and not... I ended up getting arrested and my family found out about it somehow. And um, one day my stepdad called me and he had been fasting and praying and he was trying to start a small group that you have at Free Chapel. And, and he asked God, what in me is not, like search me, oh God, like what, what needs to be fixed? And we hadn't been talking mm. because of what I was doing. He just didn't want to, you know, mm. deal with me anymore. Yeah. And, Wow. And so God spoke to him and said, well, where's Dina? And he said, mm. God, she's in New Jersey. And he said, go get her. Like he had an audible voice. Praise God. <laughs> so he's fasting and praying. And God speaks to him, where's Dina? Where's your daughter? Yeah, and we hadn't been talking. And, and so he called me. And... um. And he's, and meanwhile, uh, honestly, on the other end of the phone, I'm sniffing a line while he's talking to me. Wow. And he's saying, I want to come get you. And they talked about new beginnings. And I'm like, no, you know, that, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do that. But he wanted to come get me. So um, he did. He, um, he came and got me. He flew all the way to New Jersey. Wow. And <laughs> flew me back to Georgia. And I didn't think I was going to stay here, you know. I thought, oh, I'm going to go back. I'm just going to detox, get off these drugs. And well, long story short, I ended up staying here. And um, I think you prayed with my parents, actually, a lot of times. And that whole church got me here. That your parents would come to the altar and they would pray almost every service. They would come down and they would, they would ask me, will you pray? For Dina, will you pray? Pray with us. Pray over and over. I, and over. I can't tell you how many times we did that. I know. I didn't know who you were, but I, <laughs> I knew that that we were praying and God was working. Yeah. Don't you ever stop praying? Don't you ever stop? So you, now your life is uh, what what's what's happening with you now? Well, I guess I just wanted to tell you the, the part that when okay. you know I got saved and everything, and I started doing, I hung out with everybody good in Free Chapel, like all the I had great friends and. And I relapsed, and right. I wanted to let you know that because I saw I, I had. That. I love this story. This yeah. is good. This is going to help people. I had God one doesn't foot. quit though. When yeah. even if we relapse, even if we fail, right. let's, we all we right. all need God's grace and mercy. He'll never yes. give up on you. Do you understand that? He still hasn't given up on you. He'll never give up on you. He didn't give up on you, did he? Didn't. No, two times. I mean, you know, like the first time, and then. The second time, and I had so much guilt yeah. for yeah. relapsing and being, yeah. you know, mm. I thought I had it all together. and So good. And I was, oh, I wouldn't even hold my head up in church when everybody knew wow. that I got arrested. I got arrested because I had a pill in my car. And as soon as I got in the back of the cop car, I said new beginnings, you know, because I didn't go the three years before. when I, I didn't go at that point when I came. This was in 2013. Right. I said, no, I'll do it on my own. And I came to New Beginnings and I visited there and I said, I'm not going there. Are you crazy? Like, no. And, <laughs> and I said, I'll do it on my own. Well, I, for three yeah. years, two and a half years, <laughs> I thought I could do it, you know? And I had everything in place and I still relapsed because I had one foot in the world. And, um, wow. And so it wasn't until I came to New Beginnings. That's when now I have a wonderful relationship that I thought I had, no, I know I have it now. Amen. And I, the mercy and grace that he's given me. So great, so powerful, my goodness. Sharon, I want you to pray with people. You prayed with these ladies. You prayed with thousands upon thousands of, uh, of addicts, hundreds of addicts and, and alcoholics and people who had other addictions and God has trained you and used you specifically in a deliverance ministry. I want you to pray for the thousands and potentially millions who are viewing this telecast, a prayer of salvation, a prayer of deliverance, a prayer of freedom, and share anything you want to share in closing. Well, I just know what God can do. Yes, He can. 
And our success right now over the last four years with those completing 12 plus months is 77.8% Wow! over the last four years. Wow. I mean, but it's all God. There's something about Jesus. Jesus. There's something about that name. <laughs> That's right. He, Jesus is the one who sets us free. Come on. He's the one who makes the difference. He's the one that can take us from the pit to the palace. We're looking at it. Only Jesus Amen. could change their lives. Only Sam. Jesus and his precious blood. Lead someone to that Savior. Amen. Father God, right now, as we are in agreement, Father, we lift up everyone that's listening or watching this broadcast, Father God, that has an addiction. It could be alcohol, it could be drugs. Father, it could be anything. It could be a food addiction. It could be too much computer where they're not spending time with you. Good. Father, we just lift them to you right now, Father God. And we yes. ask that the power of the Holy Spirit just yes. flood that room where they're at right Jesus now. Name. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way. You Holy Spirit or the convictor, you're the one who draws us and comforts yes. us. No mm. matter what we're going through, you comfort us in a time of need. And we thank you for that, Holy Spirit. Mm. And Father, we'll give you the glory. And Father, we thank you for souls that are being won, Father God. Jesus. Man. Through this ministry, through Kingdom Connection, Father God, and the ministries that Kingdom Connection supports, we thank you, Father. Yes. And we give you all the glory in Jesus', in Jesus name, name. We pray. Amen, amen and amen. Now, if you just prayed with Sharon, if you just felt that that presence that Carly felt when she was in a in a prison, you don't have to be in a church to be saved. You don't have to be in some evangelistic crusade. Jesus is right there in that room, yes. right there in that prison cell, right there in that hospital room, right there in that apartment, right there. Call on Him. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And there's a number that you can dial. We would love to pray with you. We'll send you some free material, and we're going to help you in your new walk with God. I'm going to come right back after my announcer talks to you, and I'm going to I'm going to talk to you about something that I believe you'll want to be a part of. At some point in life, we all need a second chance. This month, we are celebrating lives that have been transformed and the place that helped them get there. New Beginnings is a ministry for women recovering from life-destructive behaviors. They provide a safe and structured environment to overcome addictions, build self-esteem, and plan for the future. This is accomplished through building a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. The reason I believe it takes a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to break any addiction, whatever it is, is because it doesn't work if you do it for you. It doesn't work if you do it for somebody else because you think you can sneak around, but you don't sneak around Jesus. Kingdom Connection has been proud to partner with New Beginnings for over a decade. In addition to monthly sponsorship, we completely funded the construction of a new 14-bedroom dormitory for at-risk women and their children. Without new beginnings, many of these children would never have the chance to know their mothers. We are giving these families a chance at recovery and the opportunity to have a normal life. I want to thank all of you who have contributed to the support of New Beginnings because it's continued to grow and so many lives have been changed. Because of the monthly donation that we receive, we're able to have 12 women off the streets who have absolutely no means of coming in. Those women would have remained in jail or on the streets, but now they can have their child, love their child, and bond with their child here at New Beginnings. In our closing moments together, I want to share a burden, a good burden on our heart and one that we're so excited about being a part of. Our ministry, you, the wonderful friends and partners of Kingdom Connection, built one dorm for the new beginnings and the women that you've heard from actually lived and part of their families lived in these facilities. 
but they're in need right now of a, an enlargement. And uh, they want a facility that will take in another, I uh, believe you said 18? 18 more 18 women. 18 more yes. women and 30 children and a new dining hall that will help fa facilitate dynamic, powerful, life-changing ministry. It's gonna cost, this is gonna cost about $300,000 when it's all said and done. And I know, I know this is a thing that, you know, when I heard that number 300, I thought of Gideon's 300, that God used 300 to make a, make a difference. And they, they, you know, got together and they saw a great victory. And I believe there's 300 people that's watching me today that will partner with this ministry. And when we tell you we do something, we do it. With every penny that you give, we do it. And I'm believing today that there are 300 people at the beginning of a brand new year who are gonna sow a first fruit offering of $1,000. 300 people to sow a $1,000 gift into New Beginnings Ministry through Kingdom Connection. We are gonna send exactly what we tell you we're gonna to do to help this ministry reach more lives because they are restoring the stolen years that the enemy took from these families and these precious women. And I wanna ask you to pray about, would you pray about today being a part of this miracle? Father, your sheep know your voice. And I pray today for every person who hears this program that you would speak to 300 specific people and as they sow into this ministry to bless new beginnings with a new dorm, to facilitate 18 women and 30 children and feed the hungry, that in return, miracles in 2017 would come back to their own house in astounding ways, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. I'm praying for you. If you can't give that, give your best, but let me say this, if you can't give anything, pray for us. I know there's 300 out there that God will speak to. Yes. Pray for that miracle to happen. Even if you can't give, God will bless you for that. Thank you for watching this program. We'll see you next time right here on Kingdom Connection. Here at Free Chapel, our mission is simple, to inspire people to live for Jesus. With incredible worship and messages by senior pastor Jensen Franklin, you will leave encouraged to thrive throughout the week. We offer great opportunities for you and your entire family to grow, connect with others, and serve the community. We would love for you to take advantage of all Free Chapel has to offer. For kids from newborn to 12, there's Kid Pack. It's one of the top children's programs around. For middle and high school students, Wednesday night is the best night of the week with Free Chapel Youth. In addition to our weekly events, we have conferences with some of the top musicians and speakers from around the world. For more information on all we have to offer, a great place to start is freechapel.org. So come, I invite you to join us at one of our campuses this Sunday here at Free Chapel, a place to call home. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.